Okay, so we want to find the volume of all of these solids. The idea of volume is like how much water these objects can hold. That's what volume is. It's a number that describes sort of the capacity for these objects to hold that much water. Anyways, look, all of these shapes have a formula. The formula for the volume of a sphere would be this, 4 thirds pi r cubed. And this formula only needs one thing from us, r, the radius. So you see how this sphere has a circle sort of in the middle of it? Look at that circle and tell me what the radius is. Look, they're pointing sort of at the middle, which means that they're pointing to the, to the diameter, which is all the way through, which is 24. But we know that the radius is just like halfway. So you gotta take that number and chop it in half, which means that for this object, the radius would be 12, right? Because it's just half of 24. And so now let's update our formula. So we have 4 thirds, that's just part of the formula. Pi is just the number on your calculator. R, the radius, we had to find that. We did, it's 12. And 3 is just 3. You see, that's always the formula for the volume of a sphere. Now, honestly, just type it in. Like in the directions, if you check it out, they wanted you to round your answer to the nearest hundredth. So if I show you like this, let's round this number to the nearest hundredth. So which number is the hundredth? Go to the decimal, move over two spaces, and that number is the hundredth. So we have to decide, does that number stay or does it get bigger? So does it stay two or does it become three? To make that decision, look after. That number there decides what happens to this. So. If this number is five or bigger, then this gets bumped up. If that number is four or smaller, this stays. So since this is five or bigger, that becomes a three. So we have 7238.23. So 7238.23, let me focus my camera. And this would be the approximate volume of this sphere and volume is always cubic. So the units were inches, so we say cubic inches. And this is what they want for all these items. Identify the formula, fill in what you got to do, calculator and round accordingly. Let's try another one. This, this, this is called a cylinder. It's like a Pringles can, right? It looks like a can of Pringles. And the formula for the volume would be this here, pi r squared h. We got to tell it R and we got to tell it H. R is the radius. So look for the circle, which is this here. And the radius only goes halfway through the circle. So if the whole thingy is 14, then of course the radius would be seven because that's half of 14. Now the height is how tall the Pringles can would be if it stood here on my desk. So if I stood up the Pringles can, it would be 18 feet tall. That's a giant Pringles can, but I'm not complaining. So let's see, so r pi r squared h, and honestly, just go straight to your devices, right? Just go straight to your calculator. Let it do the rest for us, and let's see. So let's try this rounding again. So this is gonna be, so 0.8, now look, that's what I have to round. And since that's a four, that stays eight. So 2770. So we got 2770.88, and that would of course be the approximate volume. This was feet, so we say cubic feet. There it is. A couple more, and then we're done. How about this one here? You look through your notes, and they'll tell you that the volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. Maybe they have it written differently, but at the end of the day, this is the formula that we need. So let's identify the key players. I need R. Well, here's the circle. They're saying eight is the whole thing. So of course the radius would just be half of that, which is four. H is the height. Sometimes they call it the altitude. It's sort of how tall this, this cone stands above the ground. In this case, 10 yards. So we got one third pi. 4 squared times 10. And you know what? Well, we're probably getting the hang of it now, right? Just by looking here. But let's keep going, yeah? So we have like that, like that. And let's round this bad boy. So that's about 
Ooh, that's gonna stay, huh? Because that's a one, so that's gonna stay five. So I got one, six, seven, point 55. So that is the approximate volume in cubic yards for this cone. One more, a box. Look, sometimes they call it a rectangular prism. They're trying to get all fancy. Dude, it's just a box at the end of the day, right? It's just a box. Sometimes the books will say something like the volume of a rectangular prism is capital BH, where capital B is the area of the base and H is the height. That's true. But look, if we can make our life easier, we should. So what I'm saying is the volume of a box is just length times width times height. That's all it is. These are the same thing. So let's just use the formula that's easier to play with, right? Length times width times height. Which one of these is length, width, and height? It doesn't really matter if it's a box. Just pick one of each number. <laughs> that's basically it. But don't repeat. Like, don't go eight and eight because that's the same dimension. You see what I'm saying? Don't pick the same dimension. Pick a unique dimension, one of each. You want to call this the length, the width, and the height? That's fine. Either way, in any order, right? The order doesn't matter because you're multiplying. That would be whatever this says. So this one did not have to round. It said 1920, just as my pen is running out. 1920, look, they don't even say like feet, yards, inches, miles, whatever. So you can just say units. And that would be cubic units. And there you are, a little crash course on volumes of solids. So give yours a go and let me know if you need any help.